Hi everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a what I eat in a day and I'm super excited about everything that we're cooking today. I'm actually very hungry this morning so I've been having my coffee, had like a slow morning. It's the day before Thanksgiving when I'm filming this. You know how that goes. I had to run some errands for Thanksgiving tomorrow especially because everything's going to be closed all day so I went and did that and now we're going to have our breakfast which is just going to be some toast but with heirloom tomatoes on them. Which I think will be really good. So I already made like an avocado paste. It's gonna be just like an elevated avocado toast. So we have the, oh, and I'm gonna add egg to it. I should probably cook the eggs pretty soon. I just mashed up some avocado, half of an avocado with salt, pepper, and chili flakes. And now I'm just gonna get two slices out of this beautiful heirloom tomato. I wish I had flaky salt, but I forgot to buy some at the grocery store. You guys, these slices are un real look at the inside of this tomato these really aren't like even in season like that but they're just too gorgeous too stunning so i'm doing one slice of sourdough toast but it's a really big piece of bread so i'm gonna cut it in half so now i'm just gonna salt these slightly and let that sit it'll help them dry out a little bit I like all the insides, like the little jelly parts of the tomatoes. I know some people don't though, so you could take those out if you want to. I'm gonna put the rest of this tomato back in the fridge. It's so gorgeous. Need to make sure I have this toast frequently so that way I use this all up. All right, I'm gonna start off by just melting a little bit of butter in the pan. I ran out of my Graza olive oil and it just doesn't feel the same using regular olive oil. So I'm gonna do butter today and just let that melt down. We're gonna do two eggs. Look at, I have a brand new carton <laughs> i forgot what it was called a brand new carton of eggs and they are ginormous like they're so big so we need two of these i don't know they're just like so much bigger than the eggs that i had last time butter all around get it all over the pan pretty much melted now we can turn the heat down to low because i don't want them to cook too fast i honestly like a little bit of a runny yolk so i like them to cook like nice and slow just gonna crack both of these in. Sorry if you hear my cats talking in the background. There's one. And two. I'm not gonna season them with anything since we seasoned the avocado and we salted the tomatoes. I feel like it doesn't need anything extra. I am gonna get a lid though. So I'm just gonna pop this lid on and let them cook for a little while and then flip them. You guys know how to fry an egg. Here's the bread that I'm using. You can see it's very large sourdough. So I'm just gonna take one slice and I'm gonna cut it in half. Yeah, this bread is huge. If yours isn't as big, just do two slices, but it's like obnoxiously big. everyone there you have it here is my first breakfast of the day an heirloom tomato avocado toast this is gonna be so good i added a little bit of this goya hot sauce on top and then some more chili flakes i am so excited i'm so hungry right now and there's nothing better than sourdough avocado toast and we just leveled it up completely with the fried eggs and the heirloom tomatoes i feel like it's gonna be so good i'm gonna eat this get some work done do some things around my house and i'll touch base with you guys when it's time for lunch in a little bit hi everyone it's a few hours later and it is time for lunch um since it's so rainy and dreary outside i just want something like cozy for lunch not like a I typically do something really quick, like a sandwich or oatmeal or something like that. I mean, oatmeal is kind of comforting, but I just want something very fall, winter-esque. So I came up with something. I was thinking soup, but I already made a soup last night for dinner, so I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I already took all the ingredients out there right over here, so I'll go through that with you guys. And then I did preheat the oven to 400 degrees. I don't know, I'm kind of guessing on 
how I should cook all this stuff. So hopefully 400 degrees is a good temperature. So here are all the ingredients. Let's go over them quickly. We have some pre-cut butternut squash, which I feel like is such a fall staple. Um, I got it pre-cut because butternut squash is so hard to cut and I just couldn't be bothered. And I feel like this is just easier. So I'm probably gonna do like half of this. We have a steak here. It was on sale, so I was really tempted to get it. I'll probably use like half of this. I don't know if I should just cook all of it. I love steak, so I probably could eat all of this, but I don't know if I want to because I'm gonna have tacos for dinner, so I don't wanna fill up too much right now. TBD on that, but we have steak nonetheless. And then over here is all the seasonings and stuff like that. So we have olive oil, maple syrup. We're gonna add to the butternut squash. This might sound a little weird, but I don't know. I'm kind of just like winging it and doing what I think would be good. And then as for seasonings, we have pepper, salt, uh, ground cinnamon, which we're gonna add to the butternut squash. We also have oregano, thyme, crushed red pepper. I might add a little bit of paprika as well, just for some color. And then lastly, some frozen broccoli. I saw someone do something similar to this on TikTok a little while ago, and I'm kind of inspired by that a little bit. I, I don't know why I just randomly thought of it and I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna make that. So we're gonna start by like seasoning up the butternut squash in a bowl and it's already pre-cut so this is amazing. We really don't have to do much and these are already pre-chopped as well. I might add more things as we go along like maybe like a sauce or something but I don't really know what kind of sauce would go with these flavors so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just keep it simple. <laughs> Okay, our squash and our broccoli is all set. So I just mixed the broccoli in the same bowl. All I seasoned it with was just salt um, to make sure it wasn't too, super bland, but I mixed it in the bowl that I had mixed the squash in. So it did get like a little bit of the flavor from the squash, just not as much. I'm realizing I meant to buy broccoli florets, I think is what they're called, um, that are like the big pieces of broccoli. For some reason, my grocery store just had this kind of frozen broccoli and I thought it was fine, but they are really, really small. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this and make sure the broccoli doesn't burn. But once the oven preheats, I'm gonna put those in and I'll wait and hold off on cooking the steak since obviously that cooks pretty fast. Do that towards the end of this because the squash might take a minute to roast, but it smells so good. I don't know, the cinnamon may sound weird, but I think it might work. And the maple syrup. I know they both sound weird, but I have a lot of faith right now. The way it's smelling, I feel like I can't go wrong. I feel like I'm a genius. All right, everyone, here is my finished fall lunch. This took a lot longer to roast in the oven than I expected. As expected, though, the broccoli is burnt to a crisp, but that's okay, because that's how I like it anyways. But 
just use bigger pieces of broccoli if you can think ahead don't be like me um, but I like my butternut squash pretty soft so I roasted it for like 30 minutes or so I have the steak bites over here I just salted them and added pepper and that was it I kept it simple and I cooked them in a little bit of butter final meal I already tasted the potatoes and they are so good so flavorful and just like a different flavor profile i feel like than i normally do so i love that i'm gonna enjoy this on the couch and watch some shows and i'll touch base with you guys when it's time for dinner but wow what a nice little meal hi friends it is time for dinner so i just took out all the ingredients we're gonna make like a really simple but super super yummy shrimp taco i don't know why i've just been craving shrimp so i bought some the other day it was actually on sale so it was like perfect timing and i've really been craving tacos i feel like around thanksgiving and christmas i crave mexican food because all the food that you eat at like family parties and like you know all those christmas get-togethers are not typically like mexican food i mean i'm sure unless you're like mexican like a lot of pastries a lot of casseroles all that stuff so i've been craving tacos and i think i'm going to continue to crave them up until the end of the year it should be really easy we're just gonna make a homemade guac and it's gonna be like a honey chipotle taco and i'm most excited for is i found this the other day at the grocery store and i just washed it it's like one of those little squeezy bottles so we're gonna start off by making our own chipotle sauce that we can drizzle on top of the tacos and then if i have extra which i'm sure i will i can keep it in my fridge and use it for other things for a couple of days or weeks or i don't know how long it would really last but i'll have to look that up anyways i'm excited about this bottle it was two dollars at the grocery store and i'm gonna feel like a real chef or something let me go over all the ingredients first and then we'll get into making the sauce first all right here's all the ingredients besides the shrimp i still have that in the fridge i'm gonna cook that last so i'm just gonna keep it in the fridge up until i have to season it but i brought out my food processor because that's what we're gonna make the chipotle sauce in so i'm gonna do a little bit of sour cream mostly greek yogurt plain greek yogurt is the, gonna be the base of it i just have sour cream in my fridge so i figured i might as well use up some of it and then i'm also gonna do a can of these chipotle peppers i need to turn up the lights in here because it's a little dark but these are the chipotle peppers i'm gonna use i love these they are really spicy though so if you're using them in something else where you're not adding a lot of yogurt or sour cream just beware they are a little hot so let me turn up my lights before i go any further in this next up we have a lot of produce here and over here we have red onion a lime cilantro some tomato avocado and jalapeno and then for the tortillas these are just the ones I'm using, just regular yellow corn tortillas. I think I'm going to do three because these are pretty small. If you have bigger tortillas, do whatever you please. Mine are just kind of tiny and I'm hungry, so I'm going to do three. I also have my taco stands. I'm going to put the tacos on. This makes making tacos and eating them at home just so much easier. I got it on Amazon. If I remember, I'll leave it linked down below, but you can just search like taco tray on Amazon and it should come up. Then I have a plethora of seasonings over here. I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. I just took out what I thought... I could possibly use so of course we have pepper salt this is my favorite hot honey from trader joe's i love the dave's hot honey more but it's like three times the price so this one from trader joe's does the job we have paprika onion powder crushed red pepper parsley back there obviously chipotle powder scar no and adobo powder this is the one with cumin in it so i thought that would be good This was intense, you guys. I got it all in there somehow. Well, not all of it, you saw. I really messed up quite a few times with that. I don't know what I was thinking. I tried to make a funnel, but it didn't work and I don't own like an actual funnel. So it was just really difficult, uh, but I'm glad she's done. I washed off the outside of the bottle because I got half the chipotle sauce I made on it, but I ended up just doing Greek yogurt, no sour cream. Cause honestly I didn't have enough room in my food processor and I'm glad I didn't because with all that, sauce that fell out plus what's in here it would have overflowed anyways so we're good on the chipotle sauce 
this step is done and thank god that i don't have to do this for a long time because i have quite a bit of chipotle sauce to use over the next couple days so pretty here like all these colors i think right now what we're gonna do is uh, what should I do first? I'm gonna make the guac right now. I was thinking about marinating the shrimp. I don't like to leave um, meats or seafoods out for too long because then my cats will smell them. And you can imagine how that goes. So we're gonna be basically on the tortilla shells. We're gonna be putting a base layer of homemade guac. So this should be really easy. I'm just gonna do like half of an avocado. I think that should be enough. Plus lime, red onion, tomato and jalapeno, a little bit of jalapeno. So yeah, let's just make some guac and then I'll season it probably just with like salt, pepper, and a little bit of onion powder. I'm cooking the shrimp last because shrimp cooks really fast. So I figured that it'll be better to keep it like nice and fresh to the end. So that way it gets done and it's still warm when we assemble the tacos. Avocado was in the fridge and it just feels a little bit harder. So I feel like this is gonna be slightly difficult to mash up. So I'm gonna cut it into like small pieces. I don't know if I actually wanna do the whole avocado. I feel like three fourths of an avocado would be maybe better. That right there does not look like all that much, but I'm gonna mash this up for a second. If I can, it's so hard. I should've taken it out of the fridge earlier. All right, yeah, that's really not that much. I'm gonna do the whole avocado and if I have extra, that's okay. Oh, there goes the pit. I wish I had some chips and then I could just eat the rest with some chips. Healthy version of me was shopping at the grocery store last. So I only really have like whole foods and healthy stuff around the house. I have all the shrimp in this big ass bowl because I can't find any of my small ones. And then the guac is also all set. Obviously you guys saw the chipotle sauce. So now I'm just gonna marinate the shrimp for like 10, 15 minutes while I fry the tacos. Let me see if I can get an angle. This bowl is too damn big. You can't really see in that well, but I did like 12 shrimps. I don't know if that's too much or too little. I feel like that's a good amount for three tacos. I'm adding in the other lime now i'm gonna do starting off i'm gonna do some of that goya i haven't used this in a minute and i kind of miss it so let's get the chipotle sorry i'm gonna tilt it like this that way you guys can see it let's get some of that chipotle seasoning on there i'm just gonna do like two dashes of salt because the goya seasoning has quite a bit of salt in it already i'll do a little bit of paprika i literally don't think this tastes like anything i just use it for color crushed red pepper a little bit of that you can come down i'm gonna do a little bit of this hot honey that i love so much i ended up not using the onion powder and the pepper which i think i'm fine with i'm fine with that decision here's what they're looking like just give them a good little mix i'll probably cook them in some olive oil but let's just start by frying up the tortillas, which I'm gonna use olive oil for those as well. Make them nice and crispy. My taco shells are done. So now I'm just gonna individually place 
the pieces of shrimp in here. I hope that this pan isn't, oh. I literally turned the heat off because I was afraid that this pan is too hot. Did y'all hear that sizzle? them to make sure they all get some of those juices. Okay, now I'm just gonna let them cook on a low heat for a few minutes until they get a little bit crispy on the outside and then we can just assemble everything. So I actually don't know how I'm gonna do this. I wanna put like guac all in there so I might take the tacos out individually and just apply the guac to them right now to make things easier. But I like putting them in here when they're hot because they do form a bit more of a shape. this is a fail I'm so sad I don't know why because there are hole that I need to puncture in this or something it's just like coming out really sporadically so this is actually not easier than just spreading it on myself every time I put it on the cutting board it comes out like well no it's not I don't know why the sauce is like super oh there we go sauce is super thin so it should have started coming out easy from the beginning here are my stunning tacos let me show you look at this y'all oh my god these look so good i'm so excited to eat these even though the little bottle failed me i'm gonna figure that out later and i'm gonna figure out why it wasn't coming out but they still look good nonetheless i wanted the drizzle to be a little bit more perfect but i can live with that i added the cilantro on top spread the guacamole as you guys saw and i thought i made 12 shrimps but i guess i did 11 so there's three on this one and four on the other two honestly i don't know if i'm going to be able to eat all of these but they smell so good and i'm so hungry so yeah there is my finished dinner it's a few days later but i wanted to come on and end off this what i eat in a day hopefully you guys enjoyed i just finished editing the whole thing and i'm gonna upload it right now so i hope you guys enjoyed this what i eat in a day definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did i didn't eat anything besides the tacos this what i eat in a day was a very filling day i had a very early morning workout as i typically do these days and i find myself eating a little bit more I can take more protein because I've been weightlifting so much more consistently recently that I need the protein in my diet. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Got some inspo of what you can eat in a day. And then make sure to check out all my other What I Eat In A Day videos. And I will talk to you guys in my next vlog very soon.